Watch this. He said, he said, these are the horns that have scattered Israel so nobody will lift their head. Their mission is to put you to shame. They want you low. You've been divorced for seven years now. And every time your head is low. Your head is low. Why? This horn doesn't want anybody to lift up your head. So in your family, nobody seems to be the rising star. It looks like you're all level at one place. The same plague that happens to your auntie, the same plague is happening to you. Why? There is a demonic horn. There is a demonic horn. The child of God must go beyond reciting scripture and get into a realm of the supernatural to begin to discover what is missing in action in your life. Am I talking to somebody here? I came to declare by the power of God that by the power here on this altar, my God, I declare let every horn that is fighting your life be tormented today. I stand on this altar. I release it into your family. Wherever your altars are, I speak by the power of God that the money God all can Every altar and every horn that fought your grandmother and fought your mother and dealing with your life, let those horns be broken. I said, let those horns be broken. I send a word from this altar and I declare into the spirit in your life may they be broken into pieces are you hearing me right now the bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers I decline the name of Jesus every witchcraft every sorcerer every diviner every enchanter wherever they have gathered with your name and your picture with your image and your children everywhere they took your ring by the power of the blood I command your liberty I command your deliverance now in the name of Jesus I see the fire of the Holy Ghost let God crush them let God destroy them I feel the power your deliverance has come your liberty has come your redemption has come my mom I feel the power here I feel the power here I feel the When you don't deal with the horn, your life is tormented. The horn is defensive. Watch this, watch this. Every family has a spirit. And, and tomorrow I'll be dealing with it. That spirit is the strong man of your house. A strong man is a gatekeeper. Gate in the Bible signifies access and opportunity. There are some of you, your gates have been messed up with. So nothing good have access to you because your gates are shut. The Bible says the essence of this horn is to scatter Israel that nobody lift their head. Now to lift a head means that to be in a place of honor. To be in a place of prominence. To be in a place of elevation. And there are some of you, you can't lift your head. That is why David said, Thou, O Lord, are a sword around me and the lift up of my head. In other words, God, you will not make my head go low in shame. You will exalt my horn like a horn of the unicorn. Am I talking to somebody? But these horns come to scatter that you are not able to get to a place of elevation, a place of honor, and a place of integrity. And every time something good is happening, all of the sudden, an evil happen. There are some of you you don't really remember the last time you have joy without battle. Every little thing come at the 
expense of your life. But I came to declare there is a realm you must be, there is a place you must be, there is a level you must be. That contention is over, that battle is over. Are you hearing me, somebody? You cannot be fighting for every little thing in your life. You got to get to a place that your horns are dealt with. When you were about to marry, it was a battle. When you got married, a battle. To give birth, a battle. To stay in the marriage, a battle. Every little thing that, you know why? Because there are homes. There are some of you, every little thing. What others use days to have, you've been chasing it for years. What others don't pray for, you've been fasting and praying for. Because there are some homes. Am I talking to somebody here? So, so the angel of the Lord came to the prophet and said, these are the homes. So God have employed carpenters to deal with it. Because they have dealt with Judah, which is praise. So these people can laugh. These people can praise. There is no excitement in their life. And there are some of you like that. On the outside, you appear very beautiful. But there is no excitement in your life. There is no joy in your life. Your life is tense. Everything is, is, is a serious matter. Not because you want it to be so. But because every now and then, your life is going through one revolutionary pain after the other. And there are some of you, there seems to be no increase. Nothing is moving. That's why you say, Bishop, nothing is working in my life. Bishop, I've been praying and praying and praying. But nothing is working. Because the whole are dealing with the happiness in your life. My God, but I feel this unction here that something is about to shift. Something is about to break. Yeah. Are you hearing me, somebody? Yeah. What dealt with your elder sister cannot deal with your life. You are in living faith and something must be broken. Are you hearing me, somebody? Yeah. Thank God. You are not in an Anglican church. Thank God. You are not in a Catholic church. You are in the living faith, oh Calabasha, where there is power, where there is prophecy, I see by revelation something is certain. May the gatekeeper of this house be the keeper of your life. Amen. Who am I talking to? Are you hearing me right now? Let the angel that watches over this house, let the same angel watch over your life, watch over your children, watch over your business. My God, I declare the angel of Jehovah that watches the sanctuary. The same shall watch your life from tonight. Every stronghold in your life, I command them bind, prohibited from touching your life. Come on, sapphire. Listen, if you're not careful in life, the devil will hinder you until it becomes a conformity in your life. You know, some of you have gotten to a place of accepting where the enemy has placed you as your destiny. You see, you can be so sick and you're used to it that every now and then you say, my sickness has come again. Because it's become a normal thing. You can be so disappointed until every time you're getting closer to joy, deep down within you, it's going to be disappointment again. That's demonic. So these are the horns. They dealt with Judah. Dealt with Israel. Number three, they dealt with Jerusalem. Somebody say Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Somebody say Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Can I talk to you right now? He said, these horns have scattered Jerusalem. Jerusalem is the seat of God. Seat means establishment. So these are the horns that have tempered with the establishment of God's people. You have been in New York for many years, but you're not established. Let me tell you, when you are in any land and you're not established, you're not a citizen yet. 
if the soil on which you dwell is not speaking for you, you're not established. If you want to see what establishment is, check Bishop. You come from Africa and own streets. You don't own a building, you own streets. You have grounds. You have a voice. You are seated. There is no movement in your life. Some of you, your Jerusalem is tempered with. You are living in your own marital home, but you are a stranger in your own marriage. You are a stranger at your workplace. You are a professional nurse, but a stranger. Because at that workplace, you are not known. You are not recognized. You can be fired anytime. Because the soil is not speaking for you. The Bible says that the horns have scattered Jerusalem. In other words, the people are on the land, but they don't own the land. Listen, some of you, you're not established in what you do. You're not a compound name. In what you represent. There are some of you in relationship. You're, you're living that relationship as if you're a beggar. Because you don't have authority in that relationship. So the man is able to command you about. Let me tell you. Somebody established in marriage or established in relationship have a say. You are not panicking as to what is going to happen if you tell your mind. There are some of you, you can't say your mind. You can't voice out because it's like you're, it's like you're hanging in there. It's like they are doing you a favor. You live in your own marital home, but your husband can't give you a lift. He rather prefer helping people than you. Why? You are not established in your source. But this week, I declare the Bible says, wherever the source of your feet shall tread upon you shall possess you will be in charge of your marriage in charge of the city of New York in charge oh my god I feel like talking to somebody here wherever God will position you may God give you prevailing power Amen. I said may God give you prevailing power Amen. praise the Lord listen when you establish, you'll be in a team for little years and you become a compound name. Are you hearing me? You can't be in New York without recognizing living faith is somewhere. Because when you're passing on that street, you will meet him. It's not that you're meeting it, you're meeting him. When you become established and when you're able to deal with the horns that scattered Jerusalem, you are recognized as a personality. You become a principality and a force. There are some of you from today, you will get to your workplace and they will know somebody exists. Amen. I receive it. <coughs> Praise the Lord. Listen. Listen. I was dealing with a marital issue. This couple are married for years. And when they came and I was dealing with them, the woman was crying. And I asked her why. He said, Prophet, we've been married for 17 years. My husband has never for once given me help. But every time we move out, <clears throat> he's always helping others. He said, everything I need from this man, I have to beg. Then I said to the woman, I said, woman, you have to pray. I said, because... You don't own where you are. You're not established. Let me tell you something. If you own a house and you get there, your approach is different from when a visitor comes. A visitor seems very uncomfortable in the home. When you live in your house and you're eating, your approach is different. Your confidence is different. When you're invited to dine with somebody, even if you have the appetite, you have to be careful. So when you overcome your horns of Jerusalem, you are in charge. Praise God. 
So these are the horns that have scattered Jerusalem. In other words, the people are on the land are strangers. They don't have a seat. Everywhere you're meant to be seated in life, I prophesy on your life that the grace of establishment will locate you tonight. Amen. I said the grace of establishment will locate you tonight. Amen. Watch this. You cannot be sharing if you're established. It gets to a point, even at your own workplace, the little space you're occupying, somebody has to be controlling from above. The people you train on the job now tell you what to do. Why? don't have a seat. And if you don't have a seat, you don't have a position. And if you don't have a position, you are not qualified to have entitlement. But I pray for you. Wherever you stand, you will dominate from today. Amen. Can I talk to you? A woman had three children. She said, prophet, none of my three children talks to me. They prefer to listen to others. He said, when they were even living in my house, they were not in good terms with me. I said, mom, so are they your children? She said, yes, they are my children, but they are like, they are not mine. You don't own them. They see you as strangers. When that spirit is dealing with your life, even your closest friend sees you as a stranger. And that is when you are not able to be in control of your environment. Because you are not recognized. There are some of you, the soil of New York doesn't know you yet. Ever since you stood on this ground, everything has been tough. May that horn be broken. Amen. Listen, listen. I believe that globally there is hardship everywhere including America. But in the same midst of difficulty I believe there is a leap way of opportunity on every soil. May you become a possessor. Amen. I said may you become a possessor. Amen. May you be in charge of every soil you find yourself. Amen. You don't need to move out of New York to prosper. If God can bless you here, he can bless you nowhere. Genesis 26, farming broke up on the land and everybody wanted to move to Egypt. And Isaac decided, and the angel of the Lord appeared to Isaac and said, young man, don't move from here. Abide on the soil, plant a seed and you shall prosper. And Isaac sowed a seed and that same year, he began to be in control. Ladies and gentlemen, when your atmospheric heavens open, every ground will speak for you. I prophesy in the name of Jesus where people are running from, that same soil shall speak for you. Are you hearing me, somebody? Yes. Come on, somebody shall fire. Fire. Praise God. Don't be deceived. If God puts you there, he will prosper you. Here in New York, you will meet a husband. That will bring you to the altar of living faith. Amen. I just prophesy to somebody here. Listen to me. Listen to me. Every soil, God places you. When you break the horn of your Jerusalem, you will be established. you need is your revelation to the realms of the spirit. 
Watch this. Watch this before I close. I know time is running. Watch this. It wasn't any prophet that prophesied to Rebecca. It was God himself that said, two nations are in your womb. Esau and Jacob. So this is not a prophetic word. This is a direct word. And the word says that whenever the two shall meet, Esau shall bow down to Jacob. And the Bible says that when Isaac encountered Esau, he said, Esau, if thou shalt be restless, that word restless is not just warfare. He said, if you will get the key of establishment and prosperity and blessing, you will overcome wherever you go. And the Bible says that it was prophesied that whenever the boys will meet, Esau will bow down. But in Genesis chapter 33, many years when the boys met as men, the Bible says it wasn't Esau that bowed. It was Jacob that bowed. When Jacob has sent blessings ahead just to entice Esau because he felt per adventure because of the sure prophetic word. I'm going to meet my brother at that poor place. By the time he came, God has already blessed Esau. He had not traveled. He had not changed location. He was still at the same place but apply the principle of spirituality and the Bible says when they met Jacob bowed before Esau there are some of you hearing me when people rejected you they will meet you at that same place and they will bow before you wherever people gossip about you wherever people give up I'm, oh my god I feel like preaching to two people here they thought it was the end of your life they thought you would never shine they thought you will never do well but thou sayest the Lord I will have mercy on whom I want to have mercy I will favor who I want to favor may you be God's favorite may you be preferred by the Lord may the principle oh my God I feel something here I feel the fire here you're moving out of here wherever your fiance left you wherever your husband left you wherever they left you to be May God bless you. May God favor you. May God establish you. May God change you. Are you hearing me, somebody? I see the fire of God. Things are burning. Things are changing. Things are happening. Things are moving. Are you hearing me, somebody? Come on, some fire. Fire. I feel the fire. I feel the move right here. There is a supernatural visitation. There is a supernatural. I said a supernatural. I can feel the move right here. A shift in the spirit. I said there is a shift in the spirit. There is a shift. There is a shift. I see things turning around. I see everything turning around. I can feel everything turning, turning. woman for me. I feel the move of God. I feel the power of God. The devil is a liar. I said the devil is a liar. I said the devil is a liar. Anything that has held you bound. Anything that has kept you at one place. Anything holding you bound. I see deliverance. I see you moving out. I see you shifting. Amen. Every home. They can scatter your sisters, but they can't scatter you. Paul said, let no man trouble me for I bear the mark of Christ. From tonight, may there be an inscription 
of redemption over your life. An inscription of deliverance over your life. Everybody in your family can go through, but you are exempted. I said you are exempted. I said you are exempted. Amen. Can I close with this? Listen, whatever happens to others, if you know how to key into the spiritual, they can happen to you. Watch this. In every courtroom, every one of the lawyers can place objection. But there are times the judge have the audacity to say objection overruled. The Bible says even the legal captive shall be set free. Amen. Rise to your feet, somebody. This week and through these 21 days. Oh, Jesus. Listen to me. Listen to me. I'm a prophet. I can see. Your prophet is for your prophet. Every time God will send you, I mean a genuine prophet, is to shorten your long distance. What could have been taking you years a prophetic direction. A prophet is not somebody who is a negotiator. He is an instructor. He comes to direct you as to where to go. I was preaching for a church on Sunday evening in London. The pastor I was preaching in one church and the pastor met me there. She was sitting down there. I didn't know. I went to him so I said, I said, I don't know you but God is telling me you're a man of God. God says, go and sow a seed of 1,200 pounds. I said, I'm not going to pray for you. God said, go and sow that seed. I didn't know he was in debt. And when he was introducing me on Sunday, he said he was in debt 16,000. And as he sowed that prophetic seed by the direction, I didn't pray for him. I just gave him a word. He said, that same week, somebody came to pay off 16,000 pounds. So he said to his church, when he was introducing me, he said, you remember the testimony of the dead, the church said yes. He said, this is the prophet who gave me the instruction. A prophetic direction. I'm not talking about when men try to fake it. When God is speaking. Not when men force forcing it. When God is speaking, it can't fail. This week, God will move you to where you must be. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> God will move you from where you are to where you must be. Lift your hands. Somebody is about to have a shift. I feel this pressure, Mom. Zoni Ikayaya. Le Kasua. Woman, your time has come. I feel it. I feel this thing. Tomorrow I'll minister to you. Lift your hands, our time is up. <laughs>